tuning in to Flicks and Fades. Tonight's feature film is The Color Out of Space. The Color Out of Space is directed by Richard Stanley, starring Nicolas Cage. The movie's about a family where a meteorite lands in their front yard, causing chaos throughout the evening. Be sure to check out Broadway Metro for all your feature film needs. The Color Out of Space, man, um, yeah, this is a, this was an interesting one for me. I kind of feel like the way you did after uh, Uncut Gems. You were just pissed off hating it. A little tingy? Tingy, that's a, that's a better way to put it. Yeah, I was definitely tingy. I felt so uncomfortable throughout that whole film. I haven't felt that uncomfortable since I watched The Human Centipede. Really? Yeah, have you ever seen the human center? I have, yes. Yeah, that shit's fucked up. But yes, <laughs> yeah, that was that I was that level of discomfort throughout that entire film. What made you so uncomfortable about it? You were comfortable with it? Yeah, I did, I was asking you. Okay. No, I mean it it was one of those like there was just so much so much fucked up <laughs> shit. Like I couldn't I, I for the life of me, I, I couldn't grasp like what was going on. And uh, granted we found out later on, like, that was part of it. Obviously, all of that was intentional. Right. But it rattled me so much to the point where I was just like, I don't know, man. I, I just could never, the, the time element, like, once you, you know, you find out these are extraterrestrial beings, they're kind of infecting the minds, you know, the bodies of these people, and you're like, holy shit, you know, like, I'm, why can't y'all go outside? Like, why can't you walk away from this, leave there, you know? Yeah. Like. <laughs> there was the, the the losing this track of time was the part that really was like so what, me the how most. would it did it do that though did they like just see the light and then it started just controlling them or it, what how was it so the meteor i landed in the front yard yeah you know and then from there shit just got wonky like <laughs> and, and they didn't you didn't know it who's the the son the, the youngest son was the first one that was impacted right yeah. he had his little right. weird little spell and shit he tripped out a little bit um and then next like dad started acting like his dad, but we didn't know he was acting like his dad. We just knew he was doing this weird-ass voice. Right. And you're like, why is he doing this weird-ass voice? You know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. How, I mean, how were you feeling during that? Like, um, I'll be honest, if that were a movie that I was watching at home, I probably would have clicked it off probably in the first half hour. Right. And I would have moved on with my life. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, we were there to, you know, watch right. the movie and review it. It was more about the experience. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think overall it wasn't horrible. I just thought a lot of the, uh, graphics, so to speak, were a little beyond my taste, if that kind of makes sense. Do you mean like it's too, it was too cheesy? Yeah, it was super cheesy. I mean, it kind of like reminded me of a combination of like Poltergeist and... Oh, you said that, or is it, it reminds you of Poltergeist, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to remember whatever movie it reminds me of, but it was just, it was just a little like too far-fetched for me, if that makes sense. Yeah, and that, you know, it was interesting though, because, you know, obviously JR, our man behind the camera, He's yeah. the, you know, he's the one that was telling us, like, this Richard Stanley, like, this is kind of Richard Stanley right. style, you know? Right. So for those of us who aren't, like, super big Richard Stanley fans, like, sure. we, didn't, we didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't know anything until after the fact. I looked right. it up and I was like, oh, shit, he was involved in, like, Island and Dr. Moreau. Right, I right. did like that one. It was Val Kilmer in it and it was fucked up and weird yeah. and shit, too. Right. Um, but, yeah, I didn't know what to expect. But sure. um, I, I know the big thing is, like, he was talking about the lights and the filters and shit. I... I don't know. I figured you, with the way Uncut Gems, from a sensory standpoint, had you all fucked up. I thought this one would be like one for you too. Oh well, I think the reason why it wasn't that way for me is I felt like the music, first of all, wasn't in like flats and sharps. Mm. They actually had whole notes. So as far as like audibly, it didn't bother my real senses. Right. But for me, the reason why I got into the movie and I actually enjoyed this movie is because the movie starts out in this farmland, which is the uh, Nicholas Cage. He's the dad, right? And it's his father's farm. And for me, I noticed that they're trying to paint this whole kind of Americana dream. You got the wife, the three kids, the farm. They get, they have they're by a lake. They're you know they're they're probably, riding they're right. riding horses around. This is uh, there's a scene where Nicholas Cage is holding his wife, and she's like, 
hey, we're living the dream in that weird little Nicolas Cage voice. Right. And then, so here's this like perfect Americana thing of what we think is the perfect uh, kind of family setting. And then this meteor, meteorite comes out of nowhere and just blows up the perfection Actually, of this family. Of what, of what maybe Americans think is the perfect but I don't situation. But I don't even think that we saw that though, because they, they opened up with Homegirl Remember, she was a little in nature. Like, we thought she lived in the forest. Like, right. barefoot and stuff. Right. They, they right. led you to believe that she was just, like, this little hippy-dippy girl living in the woods riding horses, right? right? And then she pulls up to the house, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, shit, she's not homeless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, right. they, they tricked you on that. Right. And then, you know, mom's sick. We find that, you know, we find out really early. Brother's, you know, right. brother's a little pothead. Right. You know, right. like... Right. It, it, they did have the, I guess, on the outside you could see, like, yeah, maybe the, there was this outward appearance of their perfection, like the but it was pretty clear right. early on that they were far from perfect. You but know, the, that the, family. The section you're talking about with the, you know, with the daughter kind of acting all weird and doing the seances in the mm -hmm. front and all that stuff, I thought that was a perfect foreshadowing of what oh, the was going to happen. Like, hey, here's Americana, but there's something off about this movie. Well, the meteor comes land. You know, the seance was Americana? No, no, no. I'm saying like, you know, the whole the whole <laughs> situation of having like, hey, this is our perfect little family living out in a little cottage farm out in the middle of nowhere. And then you got the daughter doing crazy ass weird stuff in the woods, like what right. you're saying. And the next thing you know, that was the foreshadow of going, maybe there's something off about this family and the situation. So it, for me, that's what got me into the movie. Like, okay, let's follow this story. Right. That makes sense. Well, I saw it a little different. I saw it as what a standard American family is today. Mm. You know, there's all there's the drama. I mean, you have teenagers, yeah, the drug right. use, and you have the young kid who obviously had issues. Right. I mean, they don't say what they were, right. but yeah. they were babying him as if he had emotional issues right. from the start. Yeah. And uh, so I think they were showing a standard American family as a troubled problem where they were disconnected, and it took these issues to actually tie them together. Absolutely. For the film. Yeah. No, and, and it was a trip because after, like, obviously the meteorite and everybody's, you know, impacted or whatever, like, then it would, it's what drew them closer right. in this odd sort of way, you right. know? Like, they yeah. were suddenly, you know, the, the older brother and sister were, you know, they had their way. They talked shit to each other. And initially, it was like when they were doing that, they were, they were doing that just, like, razzing each other as brother and sister do. And right. then later right. on in the movie, you understand, like, Oh shit! This is the way they're showing love for each other. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? They're talking shit to each other, but obviously it's at this super hectic part. You know, yeah. mom and little brother are in a right. fucked up place. Like, right. see, it's funny because I, I don't know. I mean, we were all sitting in different parts of the theater, but man, Paul and I were just dying laughing through the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so weird that we were like watching something that was actually supposed to be like a sci-fi thriller, almost slash kind of horror. Right. And Paul and I were just dying laughing. Well, but there were so many different scenes in that movie that actually had me cracking up. I think even the audience, because it was a booked out show that we saw. Right. And I think even the audience made this movie fun for me because there are so many different kind of viewers in the audience that you could tell. There were some people like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen. Yep. Other people yep. were so engaged in it that like they were like studying it as if they're like, you know, Richard Stanley and this you know, story based off an of HP Lovecraft. It's like this art piece. And so people are like watching it as, as if it's some Mi Michelangelo. I could see you, I could feel you. You were sitting in one row behind, just like, I know Kellen's hating this. <laughs> then Lindsay and I are laughing our butts off. And I couldn't see JR. So I don't know, uh, JR will have to tell us how he is. I can't turn my head because I hit my hair Did you laugh a lot during the movie? Or I a laughed a lot at Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that was expected from right. any Nicolas Cage movie. But I was probably more memorized by the editing and the color. Yeah. From the beginning of the film, they started the out with a green, lush film. It's just this beautiful, pristine forest. It was really in. pretty. It but was. then every, pretty much every other take, color started changing after the asteroid or meteorite hit the earth. You know, you started seeing blues in the leaves, and then you started seeing the unknown color, as they call it, the pink. And yeah. then it just moved to the point where you couldn't even you didn't know if the images were even in focus half the time because it was just washed out with filters and color, which I appreciated, but I could see a lot sure. of people were struggling with that in the flashes. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of to your point, JR, you know, when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought this is going to be the cheesiest cinematography, filters, and everything. And actually, I was impressed with how they edited the movie 
when I got it. It's almost, you know when you go to a movie and you see the trailer and the expectations go up high? Right. I actually, and maybe this is why Uncut Gems, I had such a bad re reaction, but back to this movie, is I had such low expectations of this movie that I thought it actually exceeded my expectations and mm -hmm. I actually, as a movie viewer, made it more fun for me. I am impressed. Yeah. Because I had low expectations going into it and they got lower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm be real with you. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? And I'm usually a person, I watch a movie, man, and I can find something I like about any movie, and I can understand, like, that movie was just, it, there's very few movies I can say that I, like, wanted to walk out of it. Yeah. But, again, I feel like just because it's so controversial, and it's because it's, like, people either love it or hate it type right. of thing, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's one of those, like, you gotta see it and judge it for your damn self. Sure. Because right. I, I literally, I'd hate to be the one to be like, yeah, don't see that shit, it was trash. Right. And then, you know, you might go see it and actually like it. I, I couldn't get over it. Like, you guys talking about the filters and all that shit, all that shit was fucking with me. Right. Like, the whole time. Like, I was sitting there, I'm like, I'm gonna have a seizure in this bitch. <laughs> like, I'm literally about to have a seizure. Now, I'm kind of curious, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, I'm kind of curious because pink usually is kind of associated with kind of a, a female, soft, pretty color in, like, in our real life, in the movie, the kind of filters of how it turned green to pink, the pink was kind of grotesque, yeah. ugly, and disgusting. Oh. And I think, I was wondering if that's why, if that affected you guys' thought process. Because you're sitting here going, I don't like this pretty color. Well, well the way it made the people look and the animals look when they fucking really? got zapped and they were pinkish, Ugh. fleshy, fucking looked like hairless rats. Like the alpacas. Like, like the alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that shit. Oh, man. You gotta take care of them. Like you did the alpacas. That shit was, uh, yeah, I, I it, it was, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't, I don't know. I, I literally, the whole time, dude, I couldn't, I can't, I can't even quite grasp the, what bothered me the most about it. Right. Because I, I don't have a weak stomach or anything like that. Like, I'm not bothered by shit like that. It was just, I was just uncomfortable, man. I was just sitting there. I was like, man, I'm ready for this shit to end. I cannot wait for this to end. The best part about the movie for me, the black dude lived. <laughs> oh yeah, that was an unusual. Now, <laughs> that now he did. Yeah, go ahead and say it. That was unusual. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and I love. We got. It was cool experience for us too because we got an opportunity to see the the directors, you know, uh, interview and whatnot after right. the right. show. So that was a pretty cool experience. But see to hear the actors talk about it and the first thing. See, that's actually said, like I felt bad because I really, honestly, like I said, I was pretty bored of the movie. But then when I watched the exit, like the interview at the end, yeah, you said you I actually kind of like got captivated by the movie. I was like, oh, that was kind of tender. You know what I mean? And then I kind of almost felt bad that I hated the movie as much as I did. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, like with the, you know, like that part where in the meteor it's charged by the lightning yeah. and all the electricity. Yeah. It's hard to, I would imagine to simulate something like that. Do you know what I mean? So right. for what it was, I thought it was a great job. I just, there's a lot of things that I look at when it comes to fine details in movies. Like, you know, at the end when um, the, oh, what's that guy? He's the, the water tester. Oh yeah, the, uh, I don't, his character's name was, uh, oh goodness. Anyway. I can't remember his name, but he was a I good can't actor. remember that. Ward. So he's, Ward. Yes. Ward, yeah. So he's carrying the girl, right? And then dad gets shot. And all of a sudden, she like runs to him. How are you going from being carried to all of a sudden you're running? You know what I'm saying? That type of stuff, <laughs> that, that was, those fine details in yeah. the movie, either makes it believable right. or hocus pocus for me. So that's why, like, when I like when I notice those things throughout a movie, is actually what makes me hate a movie. Does Damn. that gonna make sense? No, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's like like to revert back to 1917, and I know that I brought this up during that review, but you know when he fell down the steps, he got his head bloody. His head was bloody in every scene all the way up until he got in the river. Oh, you love that. Those little you love details. That aspect of that. But yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, to me, those are like what makes a movie, even if it's really fake, real for me. Like yeah. more captivating and captivating. Yeah, exactly. It makes me engage more in this situation. Now I'm curious know. if you were more bothered by Nicolas Cage's acting or his hairline. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to be honest, though. Nicolas Cage, I thought his acting was actually pretty great. Right. I, I will say, you know what I'm saying? If I gotta say something yeah. positive about it, I, I, it was believable. And even when he did his weird old daddy shit, like when he, you know, like the, the, 
extraterrestrial yeah, he went to the his other mind, character. and it took him to his father. He became his father. Right. Like it was funny, but it right. was like I mean I thought he was doing a good job going in and out of that. Um, I, I thought that was phenomenal. Like right. truly, I thought that part of it was was phenomenal. It was just the rest of it, man. And once the the mother and the little son became that little fucking thing. Whatever the weird, the weird alien you I was done. I was, give me the, I'm done with this shit, bro. I was going to tap you on the chair and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get out in the lobby. Now, I know, you know we're giving our opinions, but I have a question because sometimes these movies, you know, cause you to ask yourself these questions. I'm wondering if you guys were more bothered by the dysfunction of the family versus the dysfunction of how the alien presence and all this mutant forms. I mean, like, does that kind of make sense? I almost felt like the family was more scary than the actual aliens. I mean, I, I think it goes back to what, what Jeremiah was saying a moment ago. He was saying it was like, it felt like it was the average American family. So their dysfunction right. was something that we're used to. Right. Like right. you see that all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, I liked how they had actually did bring them together, like especially sister and brother, right. you know, the older sister and brother, it right. brought them together the most, I would say. Right. Um, and I appreciate that. And the other part I liked is, and, and I know people are going to be pissed off about this, and I don't give a shit, because I'm going to say it, but when the, when the fucking dog, the German Shepherd jumped down in the whale, the well, because well. the, the, the extraterrestrial thing was down in there, or whatever, and, and, uh, the brother goes after it, and, yeah. and she's like, he's like, she's like, what are you doing? The sister said to the brother, what are you doing? He's like, Sam's down there. And she's like, fuck that, Sam, it's just a dog. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's people who got fur babies and shit. I don't want it upset anybody, but at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm like, hell, she's right. Yeah, that's your brother. <laughs> fuck that dog. Who is ass up there, you know? And you know. But doesn't that scene kind of reflect the families of today? We really want to get out of this function, go to some other fantasy land, mm -hmm. but we end up always coming back to our families. So that's why I kind of like the movie because it was representing us as people. And even though you have dysfunction in your own family, you, you know, you never really leave your family. You always go back to them. So I understand about the dog part as far as- Well, cause he, he basically said fuck his family. He went down to that well for the dog. Right. He wasn't trying to live for his sister. Right. I didn't feel like he was getting closer to his family at that particular moment. Right. Well, and even <laughs> even Nicholas Cage's uh, character's the dad like valued the alpacas right. within his family. Right. So that was interesting. I was bothered thing. by that shit. That's right. the shit that really bothered me. That's you just hit the nail on the head. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That is the shit that bothered me the most. And how about the little the little kid, the, the youngest son? He valued. Uh, he had that uh, made a friend with that weird little grasshopper right. alien. Right. But that and that's just because of how disconnected their family was to begin with. Right. So even when they did have that little moment where they felt like they were together, there was mm -hmm. still they could never entirely bring it together. They do, could never be whole. Do you, you know? think the Richard Stanley as a director was that was a slight at the American family where there's uh, yeah, a JR. where there's there's pets that have better lives than humans? Uh, shit, I, I mean maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like a little dig I, at that? I don't think he would have taken it that deep. <laughs> right. Personally. You know, but that's my opinion on that. Right. Now another thing I found interesting, I don't know much about Richard Stanley, so I'm sure like you know, there's probably a lot of people that know about him. I'm not very well versed in the history of it, but what I really liked about the movie is a lot of the Easter eggs. So one of the things that maybe you guys didn't know, because I did a little research before I watched the movie, is Nicolas Cage's wife had cancer in the movie, right? Yeah, we knew. Well, uh, Richard Stanley's mom had cancer. Oh. And a lot of that, those gory scenes, uh, Richard Stanley was talking about how he saw his mom over 10 years suffer from cancer, and she eventually kind of just her body was dismantled, disfigured, and kind of deceased right. away. So I wonder if some of that stuff was that was bothering it's us. Like the symbolism? It, like, the symbolism was bothering like us because maybe there's something has. close to us that we've seen someone, whether it's cancer, drugs and alcohol, just, you know, kind of just crumble and, and grow, you know, into this grotesque being at the very end. Do you think any of that no. stuff subliminally bothered you at all? No, not not based on that. It was visually what I was seeing on the screen was what bothered me. Right. There was nothing in that movie that was like, oh shit, that's going on in my real life, and this why it's fucking me. No, it was literally, I was just uncomfortable. Like, when we were talking about the lighting and all that, Right. the filters, all that shit was just like, like you're talking about, pink is supposed to be a soft, like, feminine, pretty color type of thing, and it didn't feel that way. It felt ugly, it felt right. harsh. Those right. fucking people, the, the goddamn cat, with its skin, you know, or the, yeah, you know, the one the cat came across the That shit, yeah. That was nasty. So I, that's what I liked about the film is because 
if you look at it, it's a callback to the '80s and horror. And you know, Richard Stanley hasn't really been film active since the early '80s. And everything in there, and even Nicolas Cage said it in the interview afterwards. You know, he was taking roles from like Poltergeist and Exorcism. And then if you look at the characters, they're identical to what was in uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. Mm. You know how everybody was molded together. I mean, all everything to it. To me, the reason I think I truly enjoyed the film was because it felt like I was watching the '80s horror, where they didn't they use no graphics really, no CGI it was all type shit. Story, yeah, and it was all just those awkward moments to push you to the edge of the seat. Versus nowadays, where it's just solid CGI, and right. people are so used to seeing a, a real monster. When the monsters in there looked like they were practical monsters, like just melted chaos with a bunch of pink on them. Absolutely. And so I think it was kind of grotesque, and I can see where it can make people uncomfortable. But I also think, in all honesty, it was ingenious, and it was just brilliant editing and filmmaking to tell a story like that on something that had very little visual effects to it. Right. No, and I don't mean to make it like I didn't like the grotesque aspect of it. That wasn't the most bothersome part for me. I, I, I can watch Saw. I can see gruesome stuff. That shit doesn't bother me whatsoever. It was just the overall element. Like it, The whole film just felt very dark to me. Right. And that, that was the thing. It was like, it disturbed my peace. You know? Like, it was just like, I need to watch something funny now. I want to go watch a comedy. That's how I felt after seeing that film, you know? Kind of like what JR was saying where he felt like he was watching old 80s horror flicks and all that stuff. Um, I love Easter eggs in movies, and I noticed like a lot of the books, pictures on the wall were all like shot outs to older films. So for me, I kind of liked being kind of the mysterious detective, like where are the Easter eggs? Now I'm sure. But if you hadn't read about that, if you I hadn't know read, that, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. Because most people are gonna go to the movie, they're not gonna read that stuff. Yeah. They're not gonna research it. So you have to also be like, You're that's what, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm the guy. I'm gonna go watch this movie as it is. And then I'm going to see shit later on and read about it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Now I need to go watch it again right. so right. I can understand it better. But the first time I watch it, I want to watch it naked. Right. Not right. naked, but no, you know I what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? You're going to watch movies naked? <laughs> well, you know. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I... Hopefully not at the Broadway. <laughs> Just don't wear pink, please. Uh, uh, I do know my uh, viewer watching movies since watching movies with you guys and Flicks of Fates w has changed because if there's any stories that are made off an of older story like this this movie is based off of HP Lovecraft uh, movie and story I'm going to probably do more research so I can see more of the Easter eggs so I've actually kind of changed as a viewer I do like your style viewing it where you just go in blank and see what happens but I think if I watch a movie where it's already made I'm going to probably do some research so I can enjoy the movie and the Easter eggs more Oh, what do you guys think of? Is it Tommy Chong? Yeah, Tommy Chong. What, now, <laughs> what do you think of his character uh, and his part in it? Like, he kind of seemed like this. He seemed very approachable and sweet in the movie. Yeah, I mean, he. Did he, you like he, him at all, or were you I disturbed mean, by him too? Nah, there, he wasn't disturbing or anything. It was just he, he was, was Chong. Tom, he was Tommy Chong. Yeah, right? like there was nothing to it. Like that was just like, I mean, that was a. Uh, it was yeah, like there was in smoke. Yeah. That was, yeah, I didn't, there wasn't anything special about that. Like, it was cool that he was in it, but it was just Tommy Chong. So, <laughs> overall, I mean, I think it's probably time to do some ratings on this. Well, actually, I think what we need to do is, I want to hear what you guys think. Two good things, two bad things, one at a time, of the film. And I'll, I'll start. Okay. okay. You know, I mean, two good things. First off, I think the effects and coloring was amazing. I mean, hands down. And I also think, as another good point of the film, is I think it was one of Nicolas Cage's better roles. You know, he obviously just is a prolific filmmaker and just is in every film you can imagine, a new one every hour, pretty much. But in this one, his his acting and everything fit perfectly with the way the aliens were affecting the family, and I thought it was perfect. The things I did like about it, I thought there was lack of story when it came to not telling us about the time and the manipulation within time. Because, you know, sometimes they would just walk up and be like, oh, I was gone for hours, but we didn't even know he was gone. Right. So it was kind of a pointless thing. Like if it showed us actually him leaving and then coming back at night or something. But so that was probably it. And then I think the second was, is the, how it opened. I felt that it was struggling where it was just slow and drawn out. And it was, I think they tried almost too hard to make it a beautiful area in mm -hmm. scenery. And they didn't really push and drive the storyline about it was going to get flooded out. 
you know, it was at the end when I'm like, oh, so that's why the mayor was upset with him and was annoyed that he went there, or she went there for the meteorite. It was because she'd been trying to buy the land to flood the valley. And I just right. totally didn't get that in the whole film. Yeah, it could have been me. Sense. Right. So. Okay, then. So, two good things, two bad things. Um, I say that the good things mentioned earlier, Nicolas Cage's acting. I felt like that was that was a highlight of the film. I thought he did. I thought he did very well. Um, his character and, and the whole thing. Uh, secondly, the black guy lived. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my two bad, two good things. Uh, two bad things, which the time thing. Not knowing that they were impacting the time. Had I known that going into it, I think I would have I would have felt differently about the movie. Mm -hmm. But when you're watching it and the little kid's playing in the front yard, or he's out in the front yard, and it felt like I mean several hours or days, you know, we're like, what the hell? Like nobody's checking on the kid. And there was times where I'm like, why ain't nobody checking on the little kid? <laughs> and then finally, be like, oh, where where's he at? You know, like, I, I, and we didn't know that, right? So right. It, that part, I, I wish they would have given us something to to show us that. Um, and the other part I didn't like was just. Just bright, the, the, like you guys love the filters. I didn't like the filters. Like I don't, I don't know. Visually, it was, it was, uh, it was like a, I was overstimulated at times, and I was just like, Ugh. so yeah. some people are gonna love that though. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, let's see what I didn't like. I'm kind of a huge animal lover. I always <laughs> kind of get pulled on my heartstrings a little bit when animals die. I know it's female side, but. Um, I don't know, that always kind of bothers me. And then leading into something though that was positive with that, the horse got away. So I'm super <laughs> excited about that. Um, and then I would say the other thing um, to kind of like lead in with the animal thing is I actually saw a different side of alpacas that I've never really seen before. Mm. And they actually kind of like follow around. And I don't know, I thought it was kind of dope. Like, I want me an alpaca someday. <laughs> Go get you some um, alpaca milk. I'm, <laughs> I'm drinking some of that alpaca milk. <laughs> no, I think I'll pass on that, but. You know. What were a couple, um, um, couple of things that you didn't like about it? Uh, the other thing that I didn't really care for was it really did. It seemed like it was all over the place. Like I kind of had a hard time. At the end, I understood everything that happened. And it wasn't like it was hard to follow, but it just seemed like it would jump with what Jeremiah, you were saying, like, just all of a sudden there was like a gap in time. You're kind of like, what the hell? And even for myself, like, you know, I don't know, the kid just up and disappearing or like all of a sudden people are like, oh, where's the dog? Or, you know what I mean? It was just very Same. weird to me. Like if, if some crazy shit is going on like that in the world, you're gonna be, or I mean around in your front yard, I would think that the family would kind of stick a little bit closer together, not be all dispersed out. Um, and then the graphics were not my favorite. I think the only part that I actually was kind of like, whoa, dang, was when the mom was chopping Oh, and then oh. all of a sudden she was like, "Dinner's ready." <laughs> and we knew, we knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. And then you're like, "Well, maybe it's not gonna come because it's so obvious yeah. that they're about to do but this." But I expected her to came. be like, ah! mm. and she just was like, all normal about it. So the well, rest she, like, of the movie cut her finger, for the graphics, yeah. cut them fingers off. Oh, she was, wow. she was in a trance yeah. because of nasty. the oh. of everything, and she just was chopping them carrots, and oh. all of a sudden. And carrots, Chop the finger like a carrot. Little, little finger carrots. So I just wasn't a huge fan of the graphics. I think given everything, maybe next time doing a little bit more research, I would have had a little bit more appreciation for it. But I don't know. That's awesome. What you think, Paul? Too good? Too bad? Uh, my two favorite things, and maybe because I, you know, I wanted, I guess, you know, I'm trying to do a good job for our audience, and so I thought, hey, I want to put some extra effort in doing some research. So I guess for me, the number one thing I really liked is how many Easter eggs were there, and I don't even know much about the director and these past stories. So for me, it's like I said, it's almost like a mystery movie, like where are the Easter eggs and where are the connections to these other films and shot outs and all that stuff. I really enjoy that stuff. And then... I don't know, like, I don't understand why Nicolas Cage is acting in almost every dang movie that's out there. I don't know what his deal is, but I've always been a Nicolas Cage fan. And he's crazy, he's weird. And I think he, I think the the Nicolas Cage you see on screen is the real Nicolas Cage. Oh, I think definitely. when he gets off the movie screen, that's when he starts acting. So long story short, if you are a Nicolas Cage hater or lover, you're going to like Nicolas Cage in this movie. The two things I didn't like are... Um, I felt the beginning was too slow. I didn't know where we we're going, where what what the anchor was. It took me probably halfway through the movie to finally kind of 
discover what the story was. And like I said, I'm not familiar with this material. And then lastly, um, I think I just didn't like the mom and the son um, when they like when the lightning and the alien formed them together, and just kind of the way that alien behaved as the mom and the son. I thought it was pushing some topics that we really didn't need to have in the movie, if that makes sense. It's kind of like, because there's a scene, I don't want to be a spoil, but there's a scene where the alien acts kind of inappropriately towards the daughter. Well, yeah. we don't know that for certain. Though. I know, but, but, but you know when someone like, puts something too been. close? I didn't yeah. like the whole kind of possible that was maybe close to some incense, yeah, incest or pedophilia or whatever you want to call it. it, it that made me uncomfortable. I didn't think that was necessary to show how grotesque the mom and the son together were and how they, how the alien, not the mom and the son, acted towards the daughter. So that, I don't like seeing that kind of junk in movies. See, like, I didn't even, I didn't even go, I, like when y'all said that afterwards, I didn't even, my mind didn't even go there. It's when the alien made that weird no, I know, sound, I know. that was kind of a sensual sound. I know exactly sound. what you're talking like, about. Uh, did we really need that? I thought, well, I thought that I'll pushed it way to too coincide, far. It was a little weird how like the mom stayed very predominant as the, like sun kind of sucked yeah. into the body. Yeah. It was very uh, I just I felt like it's because they were hugging at that time and she that. was like clung, <laughs> like wrapped all the way around right. her so it was easy for and, her to absorb him. And, and I know we only get two things to like but I wanted to add this because I think it's very important. In Hollywood, if you don't have money, you can't make the big blockbusters. And I think the reason I wrote like this film as well is because just the imagination through capturing film and all that stuff created the story. And like JR was saying, you guys were saying there was no CGI, just imagination. And I can appreciate someone who is Offering through the craft of movie making, just using your imagination to create a story. That so I, I think that's very important for the movie viewers to understand that. Just enjoy the imagination of right. the director and the actors. And you know what the best part about tonight is? I got my man back. What? <laughs> <laughs> Still look like Tracy Adams. All right, so uh, go ahead and go into our, our ratings. Let's do it. I would have rated this just on cinematography, storyline, and actors as a three, but I felt like Nicolas Cage did such a wonderful job about making a believable character. I'm actually bumping it up to four clippers out of five. All right, so uh, because I went and watched it, and I would recommend anybody watch it because all of our opinions are going to be very different on it, I'm going to give it a one. <laughs> one clipper. I would give it a zero. But I'm going to give it a one because I still want you to go watch it. Just so you can hate it too. <laughs> I would give the movie a two. Reason being is watching the movie to begin with, I would have given it a one. After watching the um, post interview, I would bump it up just because of the attempt and what I saw out of the actors and the producer. All right, after watching this film and knowing what I was getting myself into, being a Richard Stanley fan, I would give this five clippers out of five clippers. I highly recommend going watch it, even if you're not a Richard Stanley fan. So I just came here for a haircut, and these guys were all out watching a movie. So I still don't have a haircut, and I showed up here tonight because I thought I had an appointment to get a haircut. And these guys are, so, so I had to sit here and listen to them about the movie. I definitely want to go see this movie now because I've had to listen to them for a half hour talk about it. So why wouldn't I go see it? I'm not a big Nicolas Cage fan, but I'll go watch this movie.